Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. Got another four transit here and I'll just make the video on this because of the, the story that's behind it really. So it's been to a garage more than a dozen times. First they done a force regen and it didn't work. So they done another force regen and sent them on his way but it came back. So they come back the next day, they've changed. They said the DPF wasn't getting hot enough so they changed the glow plugs. Uh, that didn't work so then he said the DPF's not getting hot enough again so they said let's change the engine fan this is what the customer told me change the engine fan uh, to try and help the DPF get the temperature I'm not sure what the reason behind that was but that's what he said then they've changed the differential pressure sensor and then they've changed thermostat I think he said and a few other bits and pieces anyway uh, but yeah they've given up and brought it down to me so let's have a look Okay, it's done 126,000 engine management lights on. Live data here, 282% on the DPF. We have about 60 millibars on pressure on the DPF. These are the codes that we have. P244B244, P246C, P24A4, P2463. So there is no temperature codes, but of course it's been mucked around with. So we'll have to do some testing and find out. I think we both know, probably if you looked at my videos before, that it's probably got a blocked vaporizer. You can see there the engine coolant temperature is above 80 degrees, so I'm pretty sure that's gonna be okay. So I've removed the fuel fitting from the DPF vaporizer. Give it a squeeze on the pressure gauge. that is block solid up there getting some heat on the vaporizer up there it's going to loosen it up a little bit now you're going to need a 22 mil spanner on one of these trust me you need a fair bit of strength open this okay we've taken the electrical plug off and that is the old unit there you can see where it's blocked with ash now I've got a brand new replacement here that we can get fitted on okay so that's the new vaporizer fitted up there Electrical plug there connected and the fuel line connected back here Just over here. We have the fuel pump that runs fuel to the vaporizer right there So in a minute, we're gonna do a test to make sure that that's clicking So I've got a bottle of uh, launch UK DPF cleaner fluid I'm gonna put About 50% of that in here And then we'll top it up with some water Maybe a little bit more than 50% Okay, now we've topped it up with water. Now we've attached the spray nozzle to the gun and the gun is available from the same website where you get the Launch UK DPF cleaner from. Now we're back under the van, we have the DPF pressure holes here. Disconnect that clamp. Now this should be already loose. I take it someone's already had it off before. No, doesn't look like it. a little pry tool there, push that off. I'm using a piece of fuel holes to connect back on there with my uh, cleaning fluid. Okay, squeeze the trigger. That's connected to the compressor at 130 psi. Get that squeezed in. It's gonna hold the trigger until it fills completely up the DPF and hopefully that should start forcing its way through the DPF back down this way here. Okay I've connected that back up now. You can see there as I pulled it out it gave a little burst of the fluid. So you can see it just forms up there. 
Now we're back inside the van. Ignition on. Start the engine up, give it a couple of revs. And we'll just hold the revs just about there and keep an eye on the DPF pressure. Start to drop. So it evened out at about 130 there at max revs and we are now on say 15, 16 millibars at idle. It's pushed a little bit of the soot out there, you can see this one is is in black in colour. So now I'll switch the engine off, ignition on, we're going to go to special functions, powertrain control module. Reset the particle filter learned values. Complete. Start the engine back up. So we can see now the pressure has straight away decreased down to seven. So that's that's a good enough pressure. What we're going to do now is just take the vehicle on a test drive. So before I do that, I did forget to clear the fault codes. So let's do that first. So we're going to come back here, clear the fault memory. That's done. Just read those to make sure that they've gone. After we need to clear the codes after we've done the adaptions for the DPF. And we'll come back to the data stream again. Soot. That's going to be reset to zero once we've done the adaptions. And now we're going to look for temperature. Engine coolant and exhaust temperature 13. Or 1, 3. Bank 1, sensor 3 basically. Uh, differential pressure. That one. Now we'll watch all of these items. Now if we keep an eye on the live data there, we'll see that it will reach up to 600 degrees. Probably a little bit more, maybe go to 7. So it'll do just a temporary regen just to make sure everything's working there. Once it's reached the temperature, you'll see it'll rapidly decrease back down. So we're talking about the one that says 400 degrees down there. So that one there that I've ticked. So now currently at 3000 RPM, sorry, we have 75, 73, 75 millibars of pressure. That is going to decrease a little bit more once that temperature has come down. And if we let the engine idle down, we have 6.5 millibars of pressure, so absolutely perfect. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, what the vaporizer does is this temperature here, this is normal operating temperature, so like between 150 to 250 degrees, depending on how hard you're driving the car, it's going to fluctuate a little bit between there. But the vaporizer will kick in when it needs to do a regen. So when that pressure increases, it will switch on the vaporizer, which injects fuel in to increase the temperature. And it'll go up to sort of 620 degrees and burn off the soot. And then your DPF is regenerated. Without the vaporizer working or the vaporizer being blocked, it fails to do that. And then it triggers off a fault sometimes, saying that the DPF temperature was too low. But of course, if you haven't driven it long enough, it won't even give you that fault code. It would just say that the DPF's blocked. But I've never seen a DPF blocked on one of these transits without the vaporizer literally being the cause of it. Uh, so anytime I've ever seen 
a blocked EPF. I think 99% of the time it's always been a blocked vaporizer. So this customer here, by the sounds of it, he spent at least a few grand on fixes to try and fix this problem. Now of course the the guy he's taken it to didn't know what the fix was. Now what I find surprising about that is let me switch the camera around so I can talk to you. What I find surprising, everybody makes mistakes. I make mistakes myself. I've done stuff and I think, oh, I thought I was going to fix that, but it didn't. But if you made a mistake, what I don't understand about some of these stories that these customers are telling me, the customers here, what I don't understand is, okay, this this guy's made a mistake. He, he changed the glow plugs thinking your DPF's not working because the glow plugs are not working. I had a debate with someone about that before with these vans and they were saying the glow plugs are, don't affect the DPF regeneration. Now I've found out afterwards, I was persuading the guy that they do, but in actual they don't. They, they don't affect the DPF regeneration itself, but what the glow plugs will do on these transits is when the glow plugs are not working of course you're going to generate more soot which is going to be harder for the DPF to clean and not only that, that extra soot is what then blocks up your vaporizer. So whether or not they are used during the regeneration I would get them done anyway but yeah what I was getting to is this guy before has changed the glow plugs and it didn't fix it then he, he said maybe the fan has something to do with the temperature so let's change that the fan is going to decrease the temperature even more so I didn't understand the reasoning behind that but what I don't understand is when you make a mistake if I made a mistake I think okay I thought I knew what I was doing there so let's do a little bit of research if you could call it that search up the code what does this code mean google it if you google these codes on this you will straight away see stories and loads of my videos regarding the same matter and it's always a vaporizer i don't even need to tell my viewers this as soon as they see this van i could almost guarantee you and i said i've got a four transit air my viewers are going to know it needs a vaporizer this is the only reason i see them and we still haven't got the word around I don't think enough because people are still paying thousands having parts unnecessary parts replaced that they didn't need now like I said as the temperatures decreased there so has the DPF pressure so back from the data stream just go back in and confirm there's no fault codes start the vehicle up again like I said we've already taken on our test drive we've got brake pad service wear there that's why we've got a little warning about that Okay, so that's transit all sorted, and I'll see you on the next video.